Hello, this is Professor Immler, and today we're going to look at how to diagram categorical statements. Before Venn created his diagramming method that we're going to use, the basic way that we were able to show relations between different categories of things is what we call a Euler circle. And they look something like this, where you have this, and this would be the set of things P, and then there was another set within it, the set of things S, right? And so we can talk about, hey, what things are in set S or in set P? And so we might talk about, well, let's think about basketballs, right? So if we say S is all basketballs, all basketballs are, and we'll say P is things that are round. And, and this is nice for certain types of statements but they weren't really able to capture all the range of categorical statements. And so the thing that Venn did is he said, okay, let's have these partially overlap and then not talk about the entire region, but we'll only talk about specific regions. Here's our first set. And you know, in a categorical statement, we have two sets, S and then P, the subject class and the predicate class. So in Venn diagrams, we have the set of things S represented by a circle, and then the set of things P represented by another circle. And so now we can talk about the different regions that things might exist within. And so there's four basic regions that we can talk about. Region one, region two, region three, and region four. Region one describes things that belong to set S, but do not belong in set P. Region two describes things that belong to set S as well as set P. Region three refers to things that only belong to set P and do not belong to the set of things that are S. And so finally, there are things that exist in region four, which is anything that is not in S or P. So now that we know the regions of a Venn diagram, let's talk about how we mark them up, how we notate them. And let's talk first about shading. Shading refers to non-existence. So if we're gonna go shade these circles, this is region one, two, three, and four. If I shade region one, then I'm saying there's nothing that exists in that region that's shared. So if this is our S and P, only things that are S are also P. So it's another way of saying that set S is within set P, which would look like, if we were doing those Euler circles, would look something like, but the Venn diagram will let us say so much more. So let's go back to that. So that's shading. When we write X, what we're saying is something exists in that region. Could be more than one, but at least one. So if we have an X in this region, for example, in region two, but well, then we're making the claim that there's at least one thing of the set of all S's and the set of all P's that exists. Then finally, we have a blank space. And what does it mean when a region is blank? We have to be really careful what we are saying and what we're not saying with blank spaces. And this is gonna sound weird, but make sure you understand. In a blank space, it is not the case that nothing can exist in this region. Or we might say it's possible that something or many things exist in that region, we're just not ruling it out. So we're not making a positive claim. So now let's talk about the four moods and Venn diagrams. Okay, these are our four mood statements, right? So mood A, all S are P. Mood E, no S are P. Mood I, some S are P. And then finally mood O, some S are not P. When we say all S are P, another way of saying that is that there's not an S that isn't P, so we would need to go ahead and use shading and we would shade this in. Now we're not making any claims that there are S's that exist for sure. So we don't know, we aren't going to put an X there and we don't even know if P's exist. So we're not going to place anything there. And we don't even know if there's nothing that is outside of P, right? So we can't say anything there. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that. We're also not gonna shade this in because maybe it might be the case that maybe P is equal to the set of all things, in which case, if it was, then we would definitely shade this in, but that's the only time we necessarily would. So, but this is how we would go about shading in 
the mood A. Now let's move to mood E. All right, mood E, no S R P. This is also equal to the statement, no P R S. So when we think about S and P, we use our shading because we want to exclude an entire region. So we will shade in region two. And just like with mood A, we don't know if there's any S's or P's, or even if there are things that are not S and not P, right? So we leave those things blank. Our next mood is mood I. The statement sum S R P, we're talking about the existence of at least one thing that is a member of both set S and set P. So we're not going to use shading. Instead, we're going to use an X, and because it is in both sets, we need to put that in region two. Finally, let's look at mood O. Mood O says that there are some S's that are not P, or there's at least one. When we're talking about at least one, we're talking about something particular and not universal. We don't shade out entire region. Instead, we place an X. And so that would go in region one. And we would leave nothing in region two, three, or four. So this statement claims that there's at least one thing within the group of S that is also not in the set of P things. So again, we use an X, we place it in region, in region one. Now we don't know if there are also things that are in both sets S, P, or whether or not there are things that exist in set P. So we leave all that stuff blank. Okay, so this is basically how for mood A, we shade in the region of S that is outside of P with mood E. We shade in the region between the two categories to say that they are mutually exclusive. In mood I, we say there's an X in region two, so there's at least one thing that's in both classes. And then in mood O, we put an X in region one to show that there's at least something that is in category S that is not in category P. In our next video, we will look at how we can combine these basic types of statements into arguments. Talk to you then.